this past Saturday, I had the second annual DYSG Awards. And for the most part, it was a pretty big success. Got a lot of views, a lot of shares. A lot of people are sharing the content that was uh, brought about. Uh, thanks to everybody who popped up and received an award. Miss T. Franklin, you are a, you are a gem. God, uh, <laughs> your energy is infectious. I love you for that. Um, my boy, eight. God, man, eight. Two-time award winner. First time ever two-time award winner. Shout out to you, my guy. Be nice or else. You came from a long way, bro. And you definitely deserve that honor. It's funny because there was a category for podcast of the year. And that went to Do You Speak Geek? Right? Wild, right? And I want to properly give my acceptance here in the cold opening. So here we are. Um, first, first and foremost, uh, my God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for without whom I am nothing. Um, my wife, my wife Kina, baby, I love you for always pushing me to be the best that I absolutely can be, whether it be with DYSG or anything else for that matter. My son Dono, the battery in my back. My daughter Kyra, the best thing I never knew I needed. Chris Rowley for being the Obi-Wan to me um, in this podcast thing. Thank you so much, sir, for all your wisdom, for all your knowledge. Thank you so much. My boy Aaron May uh, for inspiring me to even do this in the first place. Thank you so much, brother. You and I have a lot of work to do together one day. Kim Smith, Midday Enchantments. You are You are a big piece to my puzzle so I thank you so much um, one day I want to officially make you a member of team DYSG uh, hopefully one day that happens to my brothers who always inspire me in this nerd space um, Michael Blair Chris Fury Curtis Brown the whole HNIC the whole blurred over everyone at, at, at everyone at uh, blurred eye view Thank you guys so much for always inspiring me. I'm always looking at y'all, and I see if we're kind of doing some of the things. I know that I'm on the right path. Uh, my boy Demetrius Holt for always pushing me to be bigger and better. Uh, thank you so much, brother. Um, Brandy Brown, Audacious Black Femme, for um, giving me opportunities that I didn't think I'd get anywhere else. So thank you so much for trusting me. And trusting my work, uh, Wendell Smith, Sean Lawson, the whole HBC UConn, thank y'all so much for giving me the opportunity that I never had before. It was having a table. Yeah, that was a big deal to me, so I appreciate that. Uh, my homies, the Four Cages, Eight, Hyro, Clutch, JB, man, thank y'all so much, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all are my bros. <laughs> y'all are my bros to the death. I love y'all so much, man. Y'all are definitely a reminder that I can I can completely be me in this nerd space. Chat to a Blurred Spot podcast, my boy Joni. Uh, man, so many others I have to thank. Uh, blame my mind, not my heart, because y'all are amazing people. Too Much Makeup, my girl, Karina, Frankie, thank y'all so much. Um, whew, my boy Uncle Navy Montel. Oh, my God, how could I forget my unk? Man, you are my guy to the death, dog. Absolutely. Oh man, I don't, I don't, I don't know what D Speak Geek would have been if if you hadn't been that influence and helped me out a lot. And you really did. So thank you so much, brother. Um, yeah, that's that's it, man. Thank y'all so much for uh loving this podcast, and hope I can keep going and giving y'all even more and more. All right, Colbin's been long enough, ladies and gentlemen. Blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? 
D Y S G. Keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs. Dope topics, come see. D Y S G. Keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs. Dope topics, come see. I got a question, do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh -huh. week. Get hip to the game. I'm giving y'all a sneak peek. Yeah. Flavor for your ears. Bars flowing on unique beats. Hey. Blurs and nerds. Freaks and geeks. The source wall wins. They dropping comics. You should cop. I think you don't have cheap. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Dono and Nicks. They preaching the gospel. Real ish. Ill like mono. They sick. Right. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift. It's as real as it gets. Yeah. Blurs taking over. We're clever marketing. We gain exposure. Feeding the community magic. Your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack. Corn, we aiming for gold. The truth was told. I can't speak for other platforms. Uh -huh. Sharp as cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. Yeah. We blacking out, going crazy like a black storm. DYSG, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych. I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. It's your boy Nick's back again, episode 137. Oh man, the DYSG Awards is over. I'm so glad y'all enjoyed it, but I'm so glad it's over. Oh man, if I think it was work this year, man, imagine what it's going to be when I have to make this thing live and in person. Yeah, that's coming, y'all. I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that happens. If nothing else, to make sure that the award winners get actual awards this year. So, uh, yeah, 2023, we're definitely going to be pushing to make it bigger, make it better. And just y'all just give me a, give me a minute. Just give me some time and I'm gonna make sure I make this thing live and in person. Y'all, because I, I, I think we deserve it. We absolutely deserve it. But uh, yeah, this is the pod. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for those who have been rocking with me so far. Thank you to everyone. All the listeners, all the subscribers, all the followers, all the fans, all the family, all the friends. Thank you all so much. But if you are new here, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast. We bring you all the latest and grace inside the geek realm. Shout out to Spreaker, the home team. But wherever you get your podcast, be, please be sure to subscribe to Do You Speak Geek. Shout out to all the other major podcast outlets out there for rocking with me. And y'all, please. Follow us on social media, Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets, Twitch at DYSG underscore games, Instagram at Do You Speak Geek, TikTok at Do You Speak Geek, Quirk Chat at Do You Speak Geek, Hive at Do You Speak Geek, and don't forget to check out the YouTube channel. It's the only place, the only place to find the Donald and Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications, and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. Me and Dono got some stuff cooking up for y'all at the top of the year. We hope y'all like it. Yeah, me and Dono back together again. Batman and Robin, let's get it, y'all. All right, so we're going to do what we do about this time, people. Give y'all some reviews, give y'all some news, and then we out of here, all right? So let's go ahead and do what we do. Y'all already know, ladies and gentlemen, Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? Okay, we got those reviews popping off at Rapid Fire. Here we go. Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. Uh, revamp is uh, reinvigorating thanks to the social fun and proximity chat which is an amazing feature and the excellent new DMZ extraction mode Mwah. chef's kiss great game check this one out Dragon Age Absolution Season 1 complex characters and compelling story beats make Dragon Age Absolution a memorable installment in the fancy franchise but the series' bite-sized length and deep entrenchment in game lore often gets in its own way. If you can get past that, you will enjoy this series. 
Need for Speed Unbound hasn't strayed very far from the fundamentals of 2019's Heat, but its bold new animated style is one that impresses. So check that one out. The Mean One. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a rather inept slasher that ceremoniously wastes the Grinch as a slasher villain thanks to some of the worst computer effects you'll ever find in the horror genre. The dialogue is okay, but yeah, this one could stay on the shelf. And finally, I have Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Even when its portable roots occasionally distract, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion is the best way to play one of PSP's most beloved games, almost completely modernizing its graphics, combat, and music in the process. So check all those things out, people. Let's go ahead and hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week. Oh, my God, y'all. We got a hell of a pull list this week. Let's go ahead and kick it off with the banger. Batman Spawn number one. Two dark heroes cursed by tragedy, finding their paths crossing again, but not by choice. What sinister foe is at work pitting the Dark Knight against the Hell Spawn? From the shadows of Gotham City to New York City, this epic event, epic event blockbuster you've been waiting for for almost two decades is finally here. Y'all, I have been waiting for this book since it was announced. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the first run of this back in the 90s. This one will not disappoint. I mean, come on now. Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo? What? Come on, fam. This one, this, yo, if nothing else, y'all get this week, get this one. Danger Street number one. Joining the Justice League is a goal for any superhero. But what happens when a quest for membership takes a sinister turn? Join Starman, Metamorpho, and Warlord as they look to prove themselves worthy by summoning and defeating Darkseid in battle. Soon they'll learn that calling upon a new god never ends well, and their world is headed for a crisis as a result. The journey to save the day will be a treacherous one filled with princesses, knights, and all kinds of monsters. Each person the hero encounters plays a critical role in the sprawling yet gripping narrative that is a little bit silly, a whole lot dark, and completely cool. Expect the unexpected with supporting cast featuring Manhunter, Lady Cop, The Green Team, and The Creeper. Inspired by the heroes and villains of First Issue Special, Tom King and Jorge Fuentes, Return for an unforgettable Max series that reimagines the characters and their stories. A multi-character, multi-layered crime drama starring some of DC's most obscure creations. No one will see it coming, but everyone will want to see where it goes. This is going to be a dope one, y'all. I think this is going to be a sleeper, you know, year-end banger right here. So definitely check this one out. Invincible Iron Man number one. It all ends. Tony Stark, the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist, has lost it all. His wealth, his fame, his friends. Well, he says he lost his life. <laughs> In game. But Stark doesn't realize he still has so much more to lose, especially when the assassins start to come for him. It's the beginning of the end as the Golden Avenger must fight for his life and find out what it really means to hit rock bottom. Join Jerry Dugan and Juan Frigeri as they take Iron Man to the darkest corners of the Marvel Universe yet. This is another one that has been very anticipated. Please check this one out. It's going to be a dope one. Monica Rambeau, Photon number one. Higher, further, faster, baby. <laughs> yeah. Universal powerhouse Monica Rambeau stars in her very own all-new adventure. The hero known as Photon has been charged with making a very special, very cosmic delivery. Should be light work. <laughs> Get it? Like 
whole time. Anyway, uh, uh, should be light work for Monica if family drama doesn't hold her back. Ooh, it's always your family, right? <laughs> this is another one people have been looking forward to. Definitely gonna cop this one. Wildcats number two. The mission has gone sideways for the cats as the team inadvertently runs afoul of the last group they want to cross paths with, the Court of Owls. It's the fight of the year with Talon versus Zealot. Zealot got it. Get the court. Zealot got this. Yeah. <laughs> this should be a good one. Nightclub number one. Now, precursor. This is nothing that these speak geeky saying. I'm just reading the premise, okay? However, I do co-sign it. This series will be $1.99. Take that, Marvel and DC. <gasps> <laughs> You're 17 years old and you've been bitten by a vampire. Do you live in the shadows and drink human blood? Or do you use your newfound gifts for the dream costume superhero life you've always wanted? You're bulletproof, you can crawl up walls, and you can turn to mist, bats, or even a wolf. Why not have a little fun? This one's going to be good. I'm actually going to get that one. And finally, we have a vicious circle number one. Director, screenwriter, and one of the visionaries behind the Batman and Project Power, Matson Tomlin, teams with the iconic artist Lee Benjermo. Sean Thacker is a trained assassin from the future who seeks revenge on the only other man with his affliction. Each life they take forces them both to travel between vastly different past and future eras. Spanning from the 22nd century Tokyo to 1950s New Orleans to the Cretaceous era and beyond. The two mortal rivals are locked in a battle of wills that spans millions of years, all to alter the course of history. With each time period, artist Lee Benjermo adjusts his artistic style to pay homage to luminary comic artists and historical master painters presented in a prestige oversized format. Y'all, I've seen a few screenshots of this one. Yo, Lee did, Lee did his thing. This is going to be a good book. An even doper story if, you, uh, yeah, if, you're, if you're a if you if fan of uh, two dueling assassins. This one should be good. All the other ones I mentioned, please pick those up and more this week at your local comic book store. Now, in Source Wall News, Superman has a new miniseries coming out. DC's Man of Steel is about to go on a -a one-of-a-kind journey. On Friday, the publisher announced Superman Lost, a 10-issue miniseries that will be launching on March 14th. Lost will reunite writer Christopher Priest and artist Carlo Pagolia, the Eisner-nominated team behind DC's previous Deathstroke run. The series will see Clark Kent thrown in a unique set of circumstances after a Justice League mission leaves him suddenly stranded in space for 20 years. Wow. Superman Lost has been several years in the making, and it's been incredibly difficult for me to keep quiet about this, said Priest in a statement. I am absolutely delighted to be reunited with my Deathstroke team as we explore the emotional toil of a tragic loss exact. A man of steel from an alien species is ultimately the most human among us, and finding his way home is only the beginning. Yo, this sounds pretty dope. You know, he's out there for 20 years. What could have happened on Earth? Lois probably moved on and married someone else. His son is maybe maybe John's a villain. You know, maybe Luther has turned over a new leaf. Who knows what has changed since... He's been gone for 20 years. I mean, 20 years? Come on now. This is going to be interesting. I can't wait to read this one. And uh, the god Mark Miller is teasing a return to DC. Now, acclaimed writer Mark Miller has long-term plans to make a return to DC with the reunion with a hero very familiar to his work. Mark Miller has taken a break from writing big two comics to concentrate on his creator-owned Miller World franchise of comics and Netflix projects. The live-action Jupiter's Legacy and the Super Crooks anime were the last projects to drop on Netflix, but Miller also has American Jesus, Prodigy, and the Magic Order in development. 
with so many different TV shows, movies, and comics already on his plate, Miller is also finding room to write up ideas for a future Superman series. Quote, It might take me a year or two to get ahead on my schedule, but I'm 100% going to do another Superman story at some point. I've had a notebook I've been doodling for a long time now, Marlon wrote in a story on Twitter. He also shared an image of the Man of Steel by superstar artist Alex Ross. Of course, Mark Miller left more or less open-ended when he uh, will have time with his busy schedule to get his new Superman story. But just the mere mention that he has a notebook full of Superman material is pretty enticing. Whether it's one or two years, many fans may get their wish for a DC reunion with Mark Miller. The writer is famous for his work on Superman Red Sun and Superman Adventures, with Red Sun being adapted into a DC animated movie. So what do you guys think? Are we excited for Miller to return to DC? What is he cooking up in that notebook of his? And is he going to even have time? I mean, come on now. Even as a small-time content creator like myself, time is it's always against you. And with these several projects he has, when are you going to have time to do a Superman story, bro? Anyways, I'll, I'll pick it up if he, if he does it, but we will see. All right, y'all. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 <laughs> Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, you couch potatoes. Let's talk about DC Films for a second. DC Films is... First, let me just say this. DC's flag is a very hard one to carry sometimes. It's heavy. It's a little burdensome, but I don't put it down. But everything going on over at DC, Warner Brothers Discovery right now, it just makes you shake your head. It makes you wonder, why, why am I carrying this flag? Let's get into it real quick. Let's start with Black Adam. So Variety reports that the DC latest blockbuster has generated just $387 million worldwide since its theatrical release in October. Due to a production cost of $195 million, a reported marketing budget somewhere between $80 and $100 million, and the fact that the movie theaters keep it around half the ticket sales revenues, Black Adam could stand to lose between $50 and $100 million at the box office. And a variety reported that Black Adam will ultimately break even at $600 million but sources at Warner Brothers dispute this number and said that's actually $425 million. DYSG has it on good authority that Black Adam is ultimately expected to break even. But this movie has taken so long to be made. The Rock signed on to this project back God knows how long ago. And we're now just getting it and it's going to break even. That's crazy, right? I feel bad for The Rock, though. Because he you knows, like, the the, the, the the dynamic has changed. You know, the, the regime has changed. The, the power has changed. The power structure has changed. Like, yeah, but you, you, you can't make profit, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I hate to see it, but, uh, you know, at least they don't owe no money. All right? At least they don't owe any money. So, uh, let's talk about Michael Keaton and the Batman. So, to quote Kevin Garnett from Uncut Gems, why would you show it to me if I can't have it? A new report says Michael Keaton was being eyed for Bruce Wayne again, but for a Batman Beyond movie. According to the Hollywood Reporter's Heat Vision newsletter, Plans were in motion for a Batman Beyond movie after Keaton's appearance in the upcoming Flash movie. Christina Hodson, who wrote Flash and Batgirl, apparently pitched a Batman Beyond idea which had executives excited. Hodson began working on the script, but following Gunn and Saffron coming to the lead in DC, was told to stop work on the project. Damn! That hurts. <laughs> To know that we were finally on the trenches 
in in the pocket of getting a Michael Keaton Batman Beyond movie. Oh, that hurts. That that one hurts. I'm not even gonna lie, y'all. Like that hurt worse than the fact that we're gonna be getting a Batgirl movie. Like we not getting Batman Beyond now? What? Come on, y'all. Really? Anyways. Let's talk about Wonder Woman 3. Now, according to the Hollywood Reporter, Gunn and Saffron recently spent time, quote, in deep planning for their DC blueprint and have a work in progress plan. They're ready to show Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zavlov for approval. One film that's not included in these plans is Wonder Woman 3. Insiders say that Wonder Woman's movie, the, the third Wonder Woman movie from Patty Jenkins, with star Gal Gadot is considered dead in its current incarnation. However, according to The Wrap, writer and director Patty Jenkins walked off the project after her ideas for the film were met with skepticism. An insider has claimed that Jenkins left Warner Brothers co-CEOs Michael DeLuca and Pamela Adby know what they were wrong, know that they were wrong, that they didn't understand her didn't understand the character didn't understand character arts and didn't understand what Jenkins was trying to do it apparently all came to a head when Jenkins sent an email to DeLuca that ended with a link to the Wikipedia definition of character arc damn that's a petty email (laughs) that's a petty ass email um I even heard rumors about the movie was going to be uh Wonder Woman taking Steve Trevor's body to a Lazarus pit. And there's going to be this big war between Themyscira and the League of Shadows. We may have seen the another version of Rachel Ghoul on the uh, television. No, no, not television on the, on the big screen. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. But that that email at the end, ooh, that was petty. That was some petty shit. Let's talk Henry Cavill and Man of Steel 2. Now, according to the Hollywood Reporter's Heat Vision newsletter, Man of Steel 2, which could see Cavill return to hit a role, has, quote, stalled out. Plans for the film, which began before Gunn and Saffron officially took over as co-heads of DC Studios, may not survive the regime change. The report says that Peaky Blinders creator Stephen Knight was hired to write a treatment for Man of Steel 2, but, quote, It didn't thrill Warner executives once it was received. While there couldn't have been another head writer to give it a shot, Gunn and Saffron were hired to oversee DC and development promptly ended. (sighs) Man, like, y'all, y'all, DC, Gunn, Saffron, I'm standing right here. Give me a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could... (laughs) And if not me, I know there are several other content creators who I would trust with set with Man of Steel too. I mean, I wouldn't trust them over my more over myself, but still, man, like it just needs to be rewritten. That's it. Just 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 rewrite it. Hell, you can get anybody to rewrite Man of Steel too. Just give us a decent villain, a believable villain, and make it happen. We brought Cavill back in Black Adam for what? Just say, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> Come on, man. We can do better than this. Meanwhile, The Flash, <laughs> Warner Bros. Discovery has pushed forward the release date of The Flash. The studio announced that The Flash will premiere in theaters on July 16th, a week earlier than its previous announced date of June 23rd. This is likely to avoid Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny, which finally announced it will premiere on June 30th. The Flash has had a dog time getting to the movie theaters from multiple director searches, delays, and of course, star Ezra Miller's legal controversies, including arrest and announcement that they will seek help for mental health issues. So DC, Gunn, Saffron, Zaslaw, I need you guys to collectively and expeditiously get your shit together. We need to at least see some kind of a plan. We, we we would have saw a plan if we hadn't canceled Fandom, but, you know, I digress. You move up the Flash, you 
cancel Wonder Woman. You cancel Man of Steel. You cancel a fucking Batman Beyond movie. And Black Adam's going to break even with no profit. Not a good start. Not a good start at all. But you're DC, so I have hope, I guess. I don't know. Do I have hope? Maybe I'm just here waiting for the shoe to drop. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But DC, I'm, I'm really hoping y'all get together. I really am. Because trying to defend y'all against these Marvel fanboys is exhausting. <laughs> it is exhausting. So hopefully they get together. But it's not looking good. And finally, we have a almost confirmed Rush Hour 4 from Jackie Chan. Now, appearing at the Red Sea International Film Festival, as reported by Variety, the 68-year-old martial arts star confirmed that Rush Hour 4 is underway. Quote, we're talking about Rush Hour 4 right now, he revealed. The upcoming Rush Hour sequel has reportedly been in the works for a while, with Chris Tucker revealing back in 2018 that a fourth installment was on the cards. Quote, it's happening, he said. Quote, this is going to be the rush of all rushes. Jackie is ready and we want to do this so that people don't ever forget it. Around the same time, director Brett Ratner apparently claimed that he'd be making the film despite producers stalled stating otherwise. Brett has been walking around town telling people he's going to direct a Rush Hour movie because it's his only way back in. A studio executive told T- T- The Hollywood Reporter he's trying to make people believe he's employable. Damn. Damn. I mean, he had controversies a little while back, but uh, you ain't got to lie, Brett. You ain't got to lie. <laughs> but uh, Rush Hour 4, do we want to see it? Do we need to? Do we, do, do we need a Rush Hour 4? I mean, I don't know. It'd be dope if they got Timothy De La Ghetto and uh, DC Young Fly to kind of do that skit that they did or be involved in. Like, they're the sons of Lee and, and Carter. That'd be kind of dope. They go ahead and you know pass the torch. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and hop into film life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all like Donkey Kong. That man is playing Galaga. All right, you gamers, the DYSG Awards was this past weekend, and also this past week was the Game Awards, and the Game Awards had a lot of awards given out, shout out to Elden Ring for winning Game of the Year, and the many other award winners, congratulations to all of y'all, however, what I'm here to talk about is all the reveals, and y'all, they were a lot and they were amazing. Let's hop into it. Square Onyx has revealed that Final Fantasy 16 will be released on June 22nd, 2023. Alongside the release date, fans were treated to another gorgeous look at the game, including its summon battle system and the latest iteration of Ifrit. Elden Ring developer From Software has officially announced Armored Core 6 alongside revealing a new trailer that shows giant robots fighting each other. We don't know much about the game yet, but it was confirmed that the new title will be released in 2023. Hades 2 was officially announced at the Game Awards and will send players back to the world of the original that were awarded our Game of the Year in 2020. Developer Supergiant Games is set to welcome players to try Hades 2 via early access in 2023. Hideo Kojima stopped by the Game Awards to help reveal that Death Stranding 2 is officially on the way. We got an excellent extended look at the sequel to the 2029 original, and we got a glimpse of Fragile and older Sam Bridges and more. Mm. Cyberpunk 2077's major 2023 expansion, Phantom Liberty, We'll see Idris Elba joining Keanu Reeves in the cast. Elba will play a U.S. veteran named Solomon Reed and is, quote, apparently the only person players can trust to help them fulfill an impossible mission of espionage and survival. 
Alongside the confirmation that Star Wars Jedi Survivor will be released on March 17th, 2023, the Game Awards gave us a brand new gameplay trailer that shows more of Cal Kestis' next adventure. This new story picks up five years after the original, and Kestis has become a stronger, more powerful Jedi Knight. Unfortunately, the Empire has gotten stronger as well. All right. Blizzard has officially announced that Diablo 4 will be released on June 6, 2023, and a public beta will take place sometime before then. This news arrives following a chance to get a hands-on preview of the newest entry in the Legendary series. The much-anticipated Street Fighter VI will fight its way to a June 2, 2023 release date. The news came alongside a new trailer featuring DJ, Manon, Marissa, JP, and more. Alongside revealing that Suicide Squad Killer Justice League will be released on May 26, the Game Awards took a moment to pay tribute to the late Kevin Conroy, who has been confirmed to voice Batman one last time in the upcoming Rocksteady title. A new trailer for Tekken 8 has been released, and it's confirmed that Jin Kazama's mother, Jun Kazama, will be returning as a playable character after seemingly dying in Tekken 2. We also get a good look of how combat will feel and new iterations of King, Paul, Lars, Martial Law, and Jack 8. The first clip of the Super Mario Bros. movie has arrived and it gives us a great look for the upcoming film and it's packed with homages to the games that inspired the project. Toad takes Mario through Mushroom Kingdom and we see our favorite plumber introduced to warp travel. Crash Team Rumble is a brand new 4v4 multiplayer game that will be released in 2023 and will task players with leading their squad to victory as they slide, smash, bump, and bash as a team to be the first, <laughs> if you are, <laughs> to bank the most wampa fruit in their drop-off zone while simultaneously defending the opponent's team's drop zone. A new video game based on Mike Minola's Hellboy with the subtitle of Web of Word has officially announced the Game Awards and it will be available on PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. The game is set to be a rogue title, a roguelike action adventure with an original story. All right, cool. Publisher 505 Games unveiled Crime Boss Rock A City, and it features a star studded cast that includes Michael Madsen, Chuck Norris, Danny Glover, Kim Basinger, Danny Trejo, and Vanilla Ice. The game looks to be a stealth action first person shooter that tasks players for becoming, with becoming leaders of a criminal underworld in a fictional version of 1990s Florida. That's a star sided cast right there. The first gameplay for the Lords of the Fallen has been revealed and it shows a souls like that looks to be another challenging RPG set in a dark fantasy world. This new game is a reboot of sorts from 2016's Lords of the Fallen and takes place 1000 years after the original in a world five times larger than it. Wow. And finally, The Last of Us Part 1 will no longer be a PlayStation exclusive title on March 3rd as it will finally arrive on PC. The port was supposed to arrive shortly after the PS5 launch in September, but the studio looks to be taking a bit more time to get it right. Those were some of the biggest and best reveals. What are you guys looking forward to the most? What are you most excited about? Me, can't lie. Looking forward to the Star Wars. Cal Kessis was my guy. Definitely looking forward to Street Fighter 6. It's going to be a good time, y'all. Video games. We love them here. And finally, in, uh, in uh, video game news, Sifu live action adaption is coming. Hmm. So, as reported by Deadline, Story Kitchen has partnered with Sifu developer Slowcap after a competitive purist to bring the game to the big screen. John Kolstad, creator of John Wick, will be adapting the script and he will produce alongside Story Kitchen's Dimitri M. Johnson, Mike Goldberg, Dan Javons, Timothy I. Stevenson, and Jeff Ludwig. Wow! A seafood game? 
done by the same cat who did John Wick? Yeah, I'm with that. <laughs> I'm with that. That's going to slap. I can't wait. To, yo, that's going to be dope. I can't wait. <laughs> a seafood live action movie? Yeah. Give me that. And make and make sure the martial arts in it is authentic. Because I, I, we will know. We'll know. Me and Shaq, the Spicy Run Podcast, my boy Shaq. We're going to know if it's some fake stuff in there. We're going to know. So make sure the martial arts is authentic. All right, y'all. Here's a segment that we haven't heard in a long time. Let me get back into it. Let's mark out. So what you gonna do? Goodbye and good night. Bang! All right, you wrestling smarts. Let's talk about Barry Windham. Earlier this week, 62-year-old Barry Windham was admitted to the hospital following a massive heart attack. As a result of the life-threatening occurrence, his family launched a GoFundMe page in order to help with the bills. Wyndham's niece, Mika Rotunda, also the sister of Bray Wyatt, tweeted out, Thank you all to have reached out, prayed, contributed, and sent well wishes to my Uncle Barry this week. I want to give an update. I am grateful to say he is stabilized and out of ICU. Talking and able to stand. Thanks again, everyone. There absolutely is power in prayer. Thankfully, it appears the Wyndham, it apparently appears that Wyndham is on the road to good recovery. So, shout to Barry Wyndham. Glad to see you in good spirits, brother. We're glad to see that you're doing much better. We can't lose one of the four horsemen. Can't lose one of the four horsemen. Not yet, anyway. The Vince McMahon documentary. So, it's now set to be released uh, on December 13th. Uh, the Vice TV documentary, The Nine Lies of Vince McMahon, will air on the 13th and have a two hour runtime between 8 and 10 p.m. The original premiere date for the documentary was October 18th, but it was moved because it was going to be head to head against NXT and AEW Dynamite. The documentary will feature coverage of the hush money scandal over alleged sex misconduct broken by Wall Street Journal that led to McMahon's resignation from WWE in July. Ooh, boy, I can't wait to watch this one tomorrow, boy. Oh, it's going to be good. Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre apparently are out of competition right now. Um, Drew is not medically cleared to compete. And WWE's biggest star, Roman Reigns, is also on the sidelines. Oddly enough, both stars are out with the same injury. In the latest edition of Wrestling Observer, Dave Meltzer reported that Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre are both out of action right now due to suffering ruptured eardrums at Survivor Series War Games. It's a short-term thing, and both should be back soon. That's wild. Two guys out at the same time for the same injury. That's, that's wild. Maybe they did to each other. Who knows? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, hopefully they both have a nice little recovery and get some some rest time. I know Reigns needs it because that guy, who he was putting in work this year. And the last three years, to be honest with you. Come on now. And finally, y'all, let's talk about this girl. Sasha Banks. PWInsider.com reports that the former WWE Women's Champion is expected to be at Wrestle Kingdom 17. As of this time, it's unclear whether she'll be appearing before the live crowd or just in attendance, but she is being brought in for the event. Banks previously teased in October the idea of wrestling former WWE star Kyrie in Stardom, a sister company to New Japan Pro, that recently did a crossover event with the promotion. Whatever Banks has lined up for next year, it looks like wrestling fans will see more of her and the rumors that she may even land in AEW. This has led fans to speculate that she will be the person brought in by Bow Wow ugh, to wrestle Jay Cargill for the TBS championship. After this week's episode of Dynamite, there's also speculation for fans who think that Banks could be the mystery partner for Soraya in a tag team match against world champion Jamie Hayter and Dr. Britt Baker DMD. It's also been reported by Dave Meltzer that for now at least, Sasha Banks is done with the WWE. 
Ooh, boy. If Sasha Banks pops up in AEW, y'all, do you know what the wrestling nerds are going to do? They are going to lose their collective minds. They're going to lose it. Me included. Oh, man. Tony Khan. <laughs> I need you to go ahead and write that check, dog. <laughs> get a signing bonus. Get her a boat. Get her whatever she needs. And have her bring that ass here, boy, to AEW. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be a, that's gonna be wild. What do y'all think? Will Sasha Banks show up in AEW? Y'all, y'all think she's done for real with WWE? I mean, the regime change, is it enough for her? I don't know. I guess we'll see. But... That has been the pod. Thank you all for holding it down with me. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to listen to this podcast. Subscribe to this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Check us out on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, and Hive. Check out the YouTube channel. Like, subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?